Okay, this is Manny Pacquiao. You're watching PhilippineNews.com. And um, I am just thrilled that for the first time, we're going to see Asia's most exciting MMA league here in the Bay Area. So, with no further ado, I want to introduce you to the, the owner of uh, URCC and um, an old friend of mine. Well, he's not old. I'm old. Uh, uh, I've been covering him for the past maybe 20 years uh, in, the, in Philippine TV. And I'm so proud that he's here in America, Alvin Aguilar. Hi, good evening everybody. Uh, thanks, thank you for making it. Um, again, this is a big milestone for Philippine MMA. We're going to have our first uh, ever international show and it's right here in San Francisco, URCC 29 Conquest in January 7th. I'm very, very proud to be able to showcase Filipino mixed martial artists to the world. And what a better place to do it for here. Thank you guys, thank you. one of your special guests who's here. He's a legend in MMA. MMA. Okay, um, if I'm the pioneer of mixed martial arts in Southeast Asia, this guy is the pioneer of mixed martial arts training all over the world. This guy's made history. He's fought in Japan, fought in the U.S. A really, really big household name in mixed martial arts. I don't really have to introduce him to you guys. Everybody knows him. Here we go, Mr. Frank Shamrock. <laughs> Memories. <laughs> we're about to build some memories. Um, I didn't know I was going to say anything, and I gave an hour keynote earlier, so I'm going to make this brief. Um, this is really exciting, and this is really cool. Uh, I was able to be in the forefront of the development of mixed martial arts as an athlete, and also as a broadcaster and as a um, television creator. So to see a, a brand like this and a culture like this that's been kind of waiting to break out is super exciting, and I'm really glad to be part of it. And um, I hope at the end of this, you guys will make me a Filipino, because that's my <laughs> I'd like now to call um, Mr. Nico and Ryan to come up and introduce our main fighters that are going to be fighting on January 7th. Good evening. Uh, we have two of our fighters from the Bay here. We have Derek Easterly. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Five and three from the Performance Fitness and MMA gym. And then we have Anthony Do. Anthony! Okay. Come on. Yeah. Derek is actually fighting for uh, the belt. He's actually our main event right here. Yes, sir. Um, would you like to say anything, Anthony? Yeah. Oh, Derek, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a it's an honor to be fighting for a, the URCC flyweight champion, you know, um, and um, to be half Filipino, you know, what I want to do is just you know bridge that gap between uh, the Filipino fans and then the Filipino American fans. Oh, sensei. Do you have anything to say to your uh, guy, CJ? Train hard and uh, congratulations on this kid. Anthony? Yeah. Yeah! Hey guys, my name's Anthony Go. You know, I just want to say uh, I'm really excited to be a part of this card and I look forward to fighting uh, another international fighter from the Philippines and I hope uh, I can work towards the title as well and maybe fight for the Philippines myself. So thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, no, man, same thing, just train hard, and uh, I'll see you January 7th. Now, uh, uh, Ryan, can you tell everybody here uh, where they can actually get tickets and, and watch this actual event on January 7th? 
So uh, we left a lot of tickets and over in the Filipino restaurants and most of the barber shops around here. And uh, again, the event will be in the Kizar Pavilion in San Mateo. So please come. We will also have tickets for sale later on by the entrance. So please, please, everyone support the event and go buy yourself some tickets. Thank you. Okay, have a seat, please. Thank you. All right, we have, um, obviously this is a press conference, so we want, hi Phil, we have, uh, we want people from the media, if you have any questions for uh, the fighters and also the promoters, you can please come up to the mic and um, you're free to uh, ask them any questions that you want. And then you just say where, where you're from. You can ask them like, ooh, do you want to make book book jam or whatever? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alright, any questions? From the press? I'll ask one. There you go. And say where you're... Oh, hi! <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Say where you're from. What? what? Truth is, Gara, Philippines. Um, a question to the panel: um, How excited are you guys uh, to be fighting here in the Bay Area? I'm, uh, I'm thrilled. You know, very excited. Uh, um, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm uh, very excited to be fighting, you know, for URCC. Um, it's an honor, and um, you know, I just can't wait to display my skill set, and my fighting style, uh, to all the Filipino fans, and to, you know, to all the fans in the Bay Area. You know, to, uh, this is my first time fighting for a, a, a promotion as big as this. I, uh, it's almost like a almost like a dream come true, you know. But at the same time, it's a it's a testament to all the hard work and blood, sweat, and years that I put into this uh, into this game. So. Let me ask a follow-up question. So, who's Filipino? Um, is your mom the Filipino or your dad? Uh, my mom. So, you know, again, it's an honor to have you, uh, uh, Alvin. I uh, heard a lot about you. And uh, we have Frank Shamrock, you know, one of the UFC legends who kind of destroyed the whole industry and showed everybody that not just a, 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 one of the best fighters, but also an entrepreneur going into the next level of strike force. So, maybe tell us a little about, uh, you know, there's something, probably something that we don't know, but it looks like the Filipinos are going to go mainstream. And uh, we want to hear a little about what's going on, guys. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was very successful in this, this sport and uh, built several leagues and sold a few of them. Um, and what intrigues me about this league is you guys have a beautiful country with wonderful people and you guys are kick-ass warriors. And I think it's really a matter of just letting, positioning that in, in the American conscious and marketing and branding. And um, I don't know of any other country that just fucking people up with not to play like that's messing people up with knives and being cool and family-like and really being, uh, an intimate family at the same time. That's something very appealing to me. Uh, and then I think it'll be very appealing also to the American audience. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're all the same people. And we just, we're fighting for something important. Um, but, you know, when I see your mom here, uh, you know, my mom was at every single fight I ever fought. Yeah. Because, 
when your family's with you and when you're a warrior and you're going down that path, that's what it's all about. So I'm just proud to be here. Um, my hope is that I can take this brand like I've done with other brands and create a really compelling story, get it in front of American audiences, and let them appreciate the Filipino culture and the fighting style and the, the warrior-ness that you guys have. So that's kind of my hope. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> I have a question from um, this very good-looking guy that I sleep with every night. Yes. <laughs> Mike Ingana, oh, what's your question? First of all, I'm really glad to be here to be invited. Alvin, I've heard a lot about the URCC. In fact, 10 years ago, I went and saw one of your first events in the Philippines. I got a question for you, Frank, and, and I think it's one that, that you, with your, with your broad experience in, in, the, in the sport, would be able to answer. Um, biggest change that you see in, in the game? I mean, from, from the voice Gracie sitting in the guard for three minutes to, uh, to what you see now, what do you see as being, if, if you were to be an alien coming from outer space and you saw the way you fought back then and the way you're seeing people fight now, what would you say to them? What would, you, what would be the biggest difference um, in what you see in the product? Yeah, I mean, the sport has definitely evolved. You know, I was the first ever super nerd, complete mixed martial arts guy. Um, so, you know, that was 12 years ago. So since that time, the sport has evolved tremendously. And then I think what we're seeing now is the talent is starting to evolve and evolve their skills in both presentation, in, you know, being their own brand. And I think that's the next level of the sport, is really empowering these talent to feel confident on the stage to be who they really are while they're beating people up. Because, come on, anybody who walks down this path and does all this is a special human being. And you know, our job as promoters is to show that specialness and give them a stage and then make them feel like they can do anything because they can. Um, and you know, that's the value that I think I can bring to this, is helping these talent develop their skills so that when someone hands them a mic, they sound like a million bucks and they move the story forward. We're in the entertainment business and our entertainment is martial arts. We are entertainers first. Thank you. Thank you. All right, from the press. Questions from the press. Where are you from? And uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Ronaldo Clara from the Filipino Channel. Uh, so with uh, URCC making its debut in the United States, uh, we could you guys know about anywhere, but why the Bay Area? Why San Francisco? <laughs> well, of course, uh, because we we have a we have a healthy population of Filipinos here. And of course, um, I also don't want to expand with people I don't know. Uh, my good friend and brother is here, Nito Rivera, and uh, you know, I don't really trust that many people. He's one of the people I trust in my life, so here we are. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions from the press? Any other questions from the press? Who's here? TFC? Is TFC here? Alvin, who else is here? All right, I have a question. I want to ask the fighters to speak about um, we, we, we are not, like, it takes a very different breed to be an MMA fighter. So I just want to know, like, how do you even get started? How, how, like, did you just wake up and say, I just want to beat up people? Or, <laughs> no, my, my point is, so we, we can understand the breed of these people. Like, like so let's, let's ask our main fighters. Mr. Doe and, uh, and of course, uh, you just pass it, pass it back. Yeah, well, um, for me personally, fighting is just something that came very natural to me. Honestly, I don't really care to do anything else. You know, all I do is train. And I'm not training, I'm watching fights, and, you know, studying, or I'm not doing that, I'm with my wife. And my hold on, hold on, the mic's messing up. Um, Can you help me with the mic, please? OK, 
Okay, go ahead. Can you repeat that? Because yeah. we didn't hear anything you said. Okay. So, uh, like I was saying, finding is something that comes natural to me. And uh, that's all I care to do. That's the only thing I've been really passionate about. And, uh, Hello? All right, there you there go. We there you go. So, for the third time, <laughs> what I was saying was uh, fighting is what I'm passionate about. That's what I like to do. That's all that's really on my mind. Like I said, besides uh, my wife, my daughter, and. Uh, Where's the wife? Stand up, Guapa. She's also part of Filipino, by the way. So. Oh, she's part of Filipino. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> right, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, where it attracts me to fight. So. started into fighting was um, fighting I guess fight for me fighting became an outlet like before before I started training and doing martial arts you know I was I was like the a, a, a straight city city kid from the yeah yeah area and, uh, I'm here, I'm here. just running running around in the streets getting involved with the wrong crowds of people uh, getting involved in the drugs you know uh, got sent to juvenile hall and then, and then from there, you're like I realized that I messed up, you know. So then, so then I, I discovered Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and, uh, and martial arts, and that became it became an outlet for for me to let go of that energy, and like some, a place for me to focus my energy. And then at the same time, it surrounded me, it surrounded me around more positive and more mature people. And then what got me into just fighting was just, you know, I always wanted to be a, be a professional athlete. And I saw that as the avenue, of, you know, where I could just direct my life and, and just do something good for myself. I, I, want, I want to, um, because, you know, we're all from here. We're all from uh, the Bay Area. I want Alvin uh, Aguilar, who's the... Uh, President and C and of uh, URC to let him to explain to us what what this um, this group is in the Philippines and how why he's taking it here. All right. Um, okay. Well, first off, uh, the URCC started because uh, in the Philippines, as you all know. There was no uh, proper venue to showcase his skills. If you were a martial artist, basically everybody thought you were just someone who would fight in the streets, get into gang fights, whatever, uh, fraternity rumbles, whatever. Huh? So, <laughs> so anyway, so um, there were so many talented people, and then uh, there was just no place to showcase their skills. They would get violent. Uh, when one group wouldn't accept uh, a loss, they'd do other crazy things. So we had to make sure we cleaned it up. We had to clean it all up. So we organized the first URCC in 2002 in uh, the Casino Filipino Amphitheater. We were expecting five, 500 people to show up. At the, I said, I was saying to myself, at least, I hope at least 500 people show up. What happened was 5,000 people showed up. And then we created a lot of traffic and ever since uh, we've been there. We've been doing shows all over the Philippines from Luzon all the way until Mindanao. We've had more than 80 events. Um, we're the number one rated MMA show, TV show now in the Philippines. We've beaten all of our foreign uh, uh, foreign competitors, UFC, 1FC, PXC, we beat them, all of them. Uh, only because iba 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 ng Pinoy. Uh, when we get there, the heart, you know, the passion. As soon as they get there, when it starts, they go for the win. They go for the knockout. Uh, the way you see Manny Pacquiao fight, that's how all of us Pinoys fight. So it's always exciting. It's always it's always awesome. And um, I don't want to wait for the other mixed martial arts promotions. I didn't want to wait for them before we could showcase our skills to the world. Um, I have a partnership with ABS-CBN and that will help us. And of course we have Frank Shamrock here, we have everybody here with our support. 
I mean, with everybody here, all of you guys around us, the sky's the limit. We'll be able to showcase Filipino mixed martial arts dance to the world the way it was always supposed to be. I'm really, really happy and proud we're all here. Now, I want to talk more about the event on January 7. And uh, Nico, can you tell us about who the fighters are on January 7? Uh, and also, Ryan, can you explain to us who we are going to see at the Kizar Stadium on January 7? Uh, January 7, Kizar Pavilion. Our main event is going to be uh, Derek Easterling. Uh, I introduced him to here, earlier. Here. And then Anthony Doe is going against Laurel, uh, Carlo, Laura. Okay. And um, starts at 3 p.m. Uh, doors open at 4. And we'll move forward from there probably around 12 midnight. So about 15 bouts. So, um, That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, quick background of uh, his opponent. His opponent will be CJ De Tomas. Uh, CJ's been uh, training and fighting since he was seven years old. Um, his father was a professional boxer and a mixed martial artist. So his only CJ, I don't, I don't even know if he finished school, but basically every every time I see him in a, every time I go to a tournament in the Philippines, whether it's boxing, kickboxing, jujitsu, wrestling, he's always there and he's always winning. He's always he's um he's always been active in the martial arts because of his father. Um, he was he was able he was fortunate enough to be able to get a scholarship doing jiu-jitsu. So by the time he was 14 years old, he was coaching his father while his father was still fighting in mixed martial arts. Um, he got the belt by beating the, one of the Japanese uh, champions, Hideo Morikawa. Hideo Morikawa actually a few years back beat his father by TKO. When he split his father's head open and he said, "When I'm older, I'm going to get this guy." And then he did, and he finally got the belt and. Uh, He's one of the champions in the Philippines, uh, so he'll be going up against Mr. Easterling here. It's going to be an awesome fight, an awesome fight there. Uh, now that you're on this trajectory, what is your plan for expanding even further internationally, and what can we expect to see you back in the day? Um, actually, right now, we're uh, planning about four events, three to four events this year. Um, on March, most probably, we're going to be having our next URCC show in Beijing, in China. Um, after that, we might be in either Singapore or Dubai. So that's still up in the air, so wait for the confirmation. But we're going to be all around the world this year. Um, it's about time that we showcase, like I said, we showcase the Filipino martial, mixed martial arts skills in the world. We're going to be going all, all around, all around the world. Um, so. Yeah, that, that, that's it for now. But then uh, most most uh, probably this March is, is a goal for a big trip. Any other questions from the press? Your name and thank you. Hi, Derek. Uh, I'm Kim from V81 Radio. So with regards to Alvin's statement earlier that um, CJ um, has always been winning since he has been fighting in the Philippines, how does that make you feel? Does that even threaten you, even though a little bit, or it excites you further? Uh, it uh, excites me, and uh, it uh, motivates me to train even harder. You know, just to know that uh, he's, you know, that he has a, a really strong skill set. So then, you know, for me, it it allows me to to step up my game and uh, and uh, evolve my skill set as well. Okay, any other questions from the press? So we're going to give our last statements from, um, if there are no other questions, we're going to give um, everybody a chance to speak. Of course, our fighters that are going to be in the main card on uh, January 7. And, and uh, we'll, uh, Mike, because I think that one's a little weak. So, Mr. No. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you for coming out, and uh, I'll see you guys January 7th. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, again, thank you so much for being here, and you know, we're all going to make history together. As Alvin said, the one thing about the Philippines is puso. We all have it, so thank you again, 
and for joining us in making history. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for everyone for coming. Thank you, Alvin, for putting on this press conference. Um, I'd also like to thank my mom, my stepdad, and my aunt for coming through. Uh, my two daughters for coming through, uh, you know, and then uh, I also like to uh, thank you, thanks to my sponsors, you know, that uh, that supported me all along throughout the cha training camp and through my uh, fight camp. So that's uh, Freshco, uh, Fusion International, Vista Land USA, uh, Seven Salon, and uh, Oakland's very own Tavern and Eatery, and then, um, and then in my gym, Performance Fitness and MMA. If you need tickets, hit me up. Tickets. I'd just like to say thank you for everyone that came here and supported me and all of us up here. Um, I appreciate it. I, I can see everyone's faces. You know, I mean, I'm just happy you guys are here. That's all. Oh, Melissa, thank you for all the uh, designs and stuff too. That's actually. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> I saw my other friends right there, in the middle table, number six. <laughs> All right, uh, once again, I'd like to invite everybody, uh, January 7, a URCC 29 Conquest. Uh, you see the best Filipino mixed martial artists. We're going to be here in San Francisco, our first show outside the Philippines. I can't wait to, show, to let them showcase their skills in front, in front of you guys. Very, very happy, very, very proud. We've done this together, and uh, you know, it's very, very nice to see all of us Filipinos come together for this. And then we'll show the world that I got. I'll see you guys there. Bak bakana. I don't know any cool Filipino words, so. I'll learn them. There's probably some bad ones too, but I would like to say I'm very proud to see such a good turnout and to see such a family environment. And I really think you guys are on to something. And I think the American audience would love the culture and you guys' you know, whole, whole experience. Uh, and it's super important that we all unite for this event and we bring the community out because it really will be this Filipino community that will carry this brand until we show everyone how awesome it is. So make sure you show up and have a good time and bring the family. Thank you. From the streets of Manila to the Bay Area, we'll see you on January 7th!